Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And things are about to get rather nasty in the SNP. Given that they're likely to lose a lot of seats and that some of the more vulnerable ones are held by some of the more senior party members, it seems likely that there'll be a scramble for those safe seats and therefore the teeth will be bared and it will be a, an absolute civil war and carnage as people fight to get hold of the good uns, knowing that those who fail to succeed are likely out of politics for the foreseeable future. And none of them want that. They're on too much of a good thing financially. So we'll have a look at this article to see who is likely to be the winners and losers and why some people are offering very surprising packages, like why on earth are they standing at all, given that they're not likely to get selected. And also, there's some people who you think would be selected who may not be. It's all very into Nissan, and there's going to be a lot of stabbings in the back on this one. Let's have a look. So SNP Civil War tipped to get gruesome as Nats fight over seats ahead of the general election. Uh, we're talking here about the Westminster election firstly. Uh, the, uh, the Scottish election is another few years away yet. But Hamza Yousaf and his party is in an almost constant state of crisis at the moment, mainly brought on by their own policies, it must be said. And Scottish Conservative MSP Stephen Kerr reckons divisions between gradualists and fundamentalists will only deepen. Uh, the SNP's bitter civil war has been tipped to start getting gruesome as the Nats fight over the general election candidacies and the divide between the two part halves of the party. Only this week it was reported that shamed Patrick Grady wants the chance to cling on to his Glasgow North seat, despite a Commons ban last year for inappropriately touching a teenage staffer, an act that also bagged him a six-month stint outside of the SNP's Commons group, and I've done the video on that. Uh, he's done this terrible thing, uh, and then he's welcomed back into the fold. It's almost as though the SNP doesn't care about the victim and only wants to protect its seats. Say it isn't so. Uh, but he wants to fight that. But of course, he's going to have to be uh, secured of a place by his um, party, uh, his local area. Now, there's no guarantee they'll do that, especially if senior members are likely to lose their seats and they'll be looking for a little parachute seat to put their lazy asses into so they can be guaranteed, uh, you know, eating off the scraps of the table the following uh, following the election. Uh, on Wednesday, it emerged that former Treasurer Douglas Chapman faces an internal fight to run in Dunfermline and Fife West. Mr Chaplin quit his Treasurer role in 2021 and it claims information was being kept from him and that sources say that is the reason behind attempts to oust him in the seat and that will be the end of his political career if that happens unless of course he goes over and say joins Alex Salmond. Uh, the Nats are also facing a huge loss of seats at next year's Genelec with polls suggesting support ebbing away. Many, many the Nats are also facing a huge loss of seats at next year's general election, with polls suggesting support ebbing away, meaning many MPs and potential candidates will be fighting for those constituencies where they are expected to hold on. And all that could make interesting viewing, uh, according to the Scottish Conservatives education spokesman Stephen Kerr. Now, it will, because if you've only got a few seats that are, let's say, regarded as being very safe, and you've got 30 or 40 candidates fighting for them, you might only have 15 absolutely safe seats and 30 or 40 candidates. It's going to be who gets in first. Uh, and there's no guarantee that some of the big names will. Uh, and so it could be very, very uh, interesting to watch seeing people sitting there on the sidelines, sort of, you know, crying because, you know, this particular game of musical chairs has come too soon. The music stopped and they've got nowhere to sit. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see them stomping off. Uh, moaning oh they'll try and be big and brave boys about it but they won't like it and it will be funny to see there'll be many a tear on that particular night I think uh, writing on Twitter he said the SNP faces a problem as they think about selecting candidates for the next general election he said here the, the SNP civil war will become gruesome a party mired in personal problems and distracted from running Scotland and expanding on his comments for the Scottish Daily Express, the MSP for Central Scotland predicted the party would start trying to pander to their base support while ignoring voter priorities. 
It was ever thus. They've always ignored voter priorities. If they didn't, they'd give up the independence thing and start looking at the NHS and the you know the wider economy. But that isn't going to happen, is it? Um, and with many in the nationalist movement growing impatient, he predicted an expanding schism between the different factions of the party. He said a new layer is added to the SNP civil war every day. And with the opinion post showing a drop of support for the SNP, we will continue to see them undertake an approach which is increasingly focused on Scotland playing to their base in an attempt to try and heal internal divisions rather than focusing on Scotland's true priorities, which, as I say, mainly uh, at the moment seems to be the NHS and its appalling state after 16 years of SNP misrule. Uh, and there you go, it goes on. Uh, as selections get underway for the general election, the divisions of a gradualist or a fundamentalist approach towards separatism within the SNP, which has always existed, will start to emerge at the forefront of public debate, sparking further disputes within the SNP. And he added, whilst this is happening, the Scottish Conservatives will be focusing on putting together a manifesto which will address Scotland's true priorities. I don't know why the Scottish Conservatives would waste their time doing such a thing. They have got zero chance of taking Scotland's government. Uh, they will be there. I'm sure there'll be a few, but they aren't going to be the next government. Of course, it will be entirely either SNP or Labour or some strange admixture of a few parties to form a coalition. But it certainly won't be the Conservatives, so I don't know why they're wasting paper. Uh, anyway, round that off, come up. But I think he is quite right, you know, that there won't be... Um, uh, there won't, you know, there, there, there won't be too many seats available for those SNPs wanting to run. Anyway, there we go. It will be interesting to watch once they start doing the, uh, you know, doing the selection process, uh, and they all see the shape of the polls as they move towards the autumn of next year. I mean, we are literally talking maybe within twelve months there'll be, uh, you know, an election sort of footing in the air. Um, it could be called, I mean, really, it could be called as early as sort of March, uh, but probably nearer the autumn. But they'll start putting themselves on an election footing anytime soon. They'll be monitoring the polls. They'll see the sort of the swings that they're seeing and they'll know which seats are most likely to fold um, and go to probably Labour. But there might be one that will go to Tories as well. It's not unheard of. But it'll be a, a terrible time for the SNP. And so they'll be looking to get the big guns, as it were, into the safer seats uh, but that will involve taking those who've already got those seats that may not be quite so big a gun as perhaps they once were being told to uh, shove over and leave i think that the uh, the fight is on and i think there'll be a lot of local uh, the local um, area people will be saying no 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 we don't want some guy from other way other side of the country sort of dropped in here we don't want him uh, we want our local guy, you know, and th there's going to be a lot of that. It's going to be very bitter. It's going to be a lot of tears and it is going to be joyous to watch. And I can't wait and I hope neither can you. So thank you very much for watching. If you like what you're seeing here on the channel, please hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video, but mostly leave a like. You know that one. That's the big one. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, go buy some popcorn and goodbye.